Hey guys, well, a couple of you probably wondering where in the world I've been recently. Well, I'll flip you around and explain that. Alright, so, with the holidays going on and all the work that I have to do in my job during the end of the fourth quarter, I got kind of behind on this project. So, I decided just to um, sequester myself in this garage and work on this until I got caught up. So I did not do a lot of videoing. I did some, but not a whole lot. But my main objective was, was to uh, teach myself how to weld passably enough to do what I needed to do. And so I just didn't feel like I wanted to do that and try to make videos of it at the same time because I certainly was in no position to educate anyone about welding. I'm the one that needed to be educated. So anyway, that's what I did, and I'm pleased to say that I have the floors welded in this car now. I already started treating the rest of them and uh, getting ready to do all that. But everything's in, and then they're solid. It's not pretty because I don't know anything about welding. I'm teaching myself. I'm watching tutorials and reading and things like that. So. I'm getting better, slowly but surely, but this is, this looks exactly like a first time effort. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not going to get too close, as a matter of fact, I'm too ashamed. <laughs> but, uh, I'll just kind of run through this real quick about what I've learned about the welding. I know I've heard comments from several people that say the same thing I was saying. I don't, I don't have a welder, never have welded, I need to learn. Well, it'd be a good idea if you did learn, and I'll say this to start out with, is that welding is not hard. The, the process of welding is not hard once you get used to it, but learning to weld is pretty difficult. And it's just a trial and error type thing. You need to try to, you know, uh, read and watch videos and kind of get an idea what you want to try to do with it. And <clears throat> the one, or two things I learned that are the most important, I think, is that you need to be sure that you might, you develop good control over your gun, your welding gun, like keep a hand here and then keep your other hand under it to keep it level. And uh, so you're not, and that was my problem at first, I was, I'd be too close. Well, you really can't get too close, but I'd be close enough and then I'd be too far away and I wouldn't strike a good arc, and you know, I'd just be up and down, and just you know, and that type of thing. And the other thing I think is vitally important if you're learning to weld. That's my door again. Excuse my door. <laughs> if you're learning to weld, is uh, watch how long you keep the welder on your work, because with sheet metal, especially this is 18 gauge sheet metal, and especially with sheet metal. Uh, if you just, you can burn a hole right through it if you go, if you're going like zzzz in one place. So that's, you know, if you're doing like tack welds, I did a whole bunch of tack welds in here because that's about all I could do to start out with. But, you know, you basically just zzzz, zzzz, zzz, zzz, you know, you're not trying to zzzz. So those are two very important things when you're welding, learning to weld. And another thing that I had to finally do is to quit messing with this welder because you know I was I was making adjustments with it you know I turned the turn the amperage up turn it down turn the wire speed up turn it down and mess with the gas so finally I just realized I need to quit doing that because you know that's that's introducing another variable into something that you don't need to have introduced because you're trying to learn uh, how to do this. So I would say, you know, I've, I've got this thing set roughly on the guidelines that people on the internet have talked about and the, the guide in here says. To start out with is that and the gas flow and all that. So I'm leaving that like it is and I'm working on developing my technique. So I've gotten a lot better at, and I say that relatively speaking, like I guess I've improved from terrible to fair on doing like my tack welds. So those got a lot better, so that's good. I'm still, the next thing I need to learn is, which is hard to do on sheet metal. Sheet metal is probably the hardest thing you can learn to weld because it's so thin, you can warp it, you can burn through it. So 
But maybe it's the best thing because if you can weld sheet metal, then if you get good at that, you can weld the other stuff a lot easier, I think. Because I did some thicker pieces too. It's much easier. But so that's that. So let me tell you about the way I did these. The way I did the front ones is I cut out where I had to cut out the old uh, metal. And then I had this patch panel and I really didn't want to, I wanted to use as much of this as possible because it's good, nice, new, clean metal, thick metal. And so what I decided to do is I decided to do a lap joint, I guess that's what you would call it. So there's metal, there's metal lip under this part here. It extends under it. And then this is sitting over it by about uh, half to three quarters of an inch. And then I did spot, I did plug welds around. And you'll say spot welds are not really spot welds, but uh, so what I did was I did a whole series of these plug wells. I just drilled the holes in here at intervals and then all the way around it. And then I just came back and just bzzz, and filled it up a well, bzzz, filled it up a well, you know. Had to do some where it goes on the cross member. And so I did that. And then, well, to begin with, before I even did any of it, I just did some tack wells just to kind of hold it in place, you know, so it didn't move on me. I ended up getting one kind of misplaced over there. So you got to be careful about that. But, um, and then I came back and just did some more tacks on it. Cause I just, like I said, I wasn't going to try to, I wasn't going to try to do any kind of bead. I know guys that know how to weld very well, they can do that easily. They just run a fillet all the way around, I guess, a bead. It looks great, but I can't do that. There's no way I'd ever be able to do that. So uh, I did it the way that I felt like I could do it. So it's in. And so this one was nice to work with. This thing is a well-made piece, even though it was the cheapest one that Earworm had for drop-in patch panels. It's really nice. This one didn't have to have any work done on it whatsoever. This one over here had to have some work done up front and around the side here where this little uh, shifter hump is. I had to heat it and move it and bend it and all kinds of stuff. And it's still not very clean right up there at the front but you know it, it will work but, uh, we got a lip here that didn't settle you know so it's real easy to it's real easy to see where my deficiencies are in my metal working very very easily and again that's why i wanted to go and start out with this car because you know i'm learning on this one and hopefully the next ones will be you know i'll draw uh, education away from this of what I didn't do right didn't do very well so please don't think that I'm presenting this as something that everybody needs to compliment me on I don't want to be complimented because I barely got this done <laughs> so here in the back this is even uglier back here and I'll show you why it is I've got a video clip I think I've already showed you these these patch panels and uh, let's look at this again you already seen that, I think. I'm going to put those on the front of this video. But these things came from this place called Classic to Current. I think it's what it's called. Whatever. I guess a metal fabrication. And these were, these were falsely advertised as patch panels for the rear floor pans. And as I said earlier, these bear no resemblance to any floor pans ever been in the back of one of these cars. I don't know what they did here. This is bullshit. That's basically what this is. So these things don't fit and they're in there ugly and they didn't, it's just awful. So I spent about three times, four times as much time trying to make these things fit. I'm making some rough patches and stuff. Ah, it was awful. It was awful. I've never, not only will I never single ever, ever, ever buy another single item from these people because they suck so bad. Even the good parts I wouldn't buy from them. But I learned that I should just put pan halves in this and not mess with this because this metal's pretty good, but it's got some issues too. So we've learned from that. Next time around, I'm just doing halves. That's it. Going on with it. So I'm kind of... As part of being okay with doing this and putting these in, one thing I didn't want to throw away $130. Can you believe that's what I got in those two pieces of shit? But not only did I want to do that, but 
I'm looking at these like a learning experience and it's temporary. So if they rust out, I'm gonna do what I can to save them, keep them, make them last. But if they rust out prematurely, then I'll fix it. You know, and at that time, hopefully my welding skills will be much improved. So anyway, that's where we're at with this. So uh, I am going to continue on today. I've got a little new heater over there. I've got to set up and get going. Had to go get a propane tank just now for that. But since I did these lap joints, I've got some seams in here. So I've got a couple products that I got tracked down. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to use to seal that. And then we're going to, whoops, I'm just going to shut that. Um, this is, this is pour 15 and I know people have, it's like anything else in this world. People have stark differences in opinion on this stuff. I happen to like it. I've had good luck with it, but it's one of these things that you need to use properly. So, uh, that metal there all around where it's slathered on right there was rusty. I mean, it already had rust on it. So that's the whole idea of this stuff is supposed to be to paint over rust. So I did, I did over the rusty areas and along the wells, but I did not paint the bare metal with it, a good clean metal. So uh, that's that. I'm gonna paint those floor pans with uh, Old Car Alley swears up and down by uh, Rust-Oleum. He says it's better than this stuff. He swears by it, so I'm gonna take him up on that challenge and I'm gonna paint these floor pans with Rust-Oleum, several coats. And uh, we'll see how they hold up. <laughs> and then in the middle of that, I've got a couple more things I need to do. I need to seal some seams up. So to do that, I'll show you what I'm gonna use. First thing I got, I had to track this stuff down. There's one place here in this area that had this, still had some of this. This is 3M strip caulk. And it's a lot like, I saw Howard, which is Car Alley. I've seen him, he's got some of this stuff, I think a variation of this. I think he's a lot wider, but he's using on his car. That's different, but it's sort of the same thing. And what this is used for, this is these little, uh, these are one foot strips of just like, I don't know if this is butyl or what this is, but you can see one down in there a little bit better. But this stuff is used for among, I guess, a few different things, but it's used for where there's a joint, a metal joint, and you've got a void space or potentially have void space, and you can seal this with that. You can rub it in with your finger. Can you tell the wind's blowing outside? Run it in with your finger and you can help seal that up. This stuff does not harden. And then use that for areas that are, you know, where I didn't do a very good job of sealing something. So, and then also past that, I have some Evercoat brushable seam sealer. And what seam sealer is, is basically it works more or less the same way, but you don't want to you don't want to use it on the place where there's like a you know a gap a bigger gap like I've got back here <laughs> where my metal working skills failed me right here there's a gap right here and so that's got to have that caulk put in it that black stuff really it needs a patch put on it but um, you know it's too late now so we're not gonna do that but so that'll work for that and then. The seam sealer will go on over a place like this where it's, you know, my joint, my joints are, this one's kind of ah, but you know, where it's flat enough, there's not much of a gap in there because we want to keep water out. And then we're going to do the same thing with that caulk on the bottom side where the lip is out here. So, uh, up back here, that's a beautiful patch right there. My, my metal working apparatus and skills are, Let's just try to use a nice word. Let's use the word uh, lacking. <laughs> so anyway, but we're gonna anyway we're gonna use a combination of that stuff on this thing and go with that, and that will at least seal it up. And if there's uh, any issues with corrosion in the future, hopefully that will help minimize it. The whole idea is to keep the water out of the inside. So anyway, 
Uh, we're gonna go with that. And this is really a lot more of an improvement over what the factory did. You can see that's bare metal right there. That's not primer, that is bare steel. And all they did was when they painted this thing 50 years ago, 52 years ago, all they did, they just dipped, they just sprayed it. I don't know if they sprayed the inside or they dipped this thing. They might have dipped the unibody, but anyway, there's no primer on that whatsoever. So anything we're doing here is really an improvement. So I, well, I've lectured long enough. I'm gonna work on my heater a little bit. And then uh, I have a headliner coming. I already got the insulation that I already got here that goes up in there. So that's waiting. And then the headliner, we gotta do the headliner <clears throat> before we can do the windows. But uh, in the meantime, I have several things to do. I gotta clean glass up and I have to clean up window channels and decide what I'm going to do about this kind of stuff here. That's not a hole. It's getting to be, it's going to be one, but, uh, and that sort of stuff. So anyway, appreciate everybody sticking with this and it's just kind of a drawn out thing, you know, but I have to, I don't have the luxury of having off days on my own very often these days, so I have to work to support myself, so I have to do that and do this. But it's all good, so uh, I'll bring you back here in a little bit when we're doing some seam sealing. Okay, so I got these four pans caulked and seam sealed. I like the result. It looks pretty good to me. The ridges you see are the caulk under there. Probably. I probably, that was probably overkill, but you know, I'm kind of into overkill, so doesn't bother me any. But anyway, this stuff, uh, you know, like I said, it's brush on and it's thick and you just have to lather it on there. There is no, it's not like painting. I mean, this stuff goes on thick and it does not go very far. So I used about a half a can, half that quart can on this. And, uh, you know, it's a, uh, you didn't smooth it out, but the factory didn't smooth it out. I don't know, that stuff they use there is a little bit different. I don't know if that was, I guess it was brushed on, but it's pretty thick, but they just laid it on there. And I'm sure whoever did was doing this job for that, didn't, he didn't waste any time on it. So I just lathered it on, the main objective to seal everything up, so. Uh, we'll have to do the bottom side and just repeat all this on the bottom, but that's okay because we'll do that a little bit later. Or I feel like it. Maybe not too much later. Maybe just a little later. But anyway, uh, I've been really impressed with this heater that I've been using over here. That's a 60,000 BTU propane torpedo heater, and even on a low, it kept this thing at nearly 60 degrees with the door cracked open about seven inches and i gotta get a carbon monoxide monitor for in here because i don't like that idea of that creeping in here without knowing it so i'd take a break about every two minutes i'd go outside and get some fresh air but i felt okay i was wearing my mask too because it man it stinks in here so it's a little bit like propane and burnt propane and a lot like that seam sealer man i tell you whoever Whoever had this job at the factory, if they lived past about 50 years old, I'd probably be shocked. But another thing too, though I don't recommend it, but if you wanted an entirely accurate job of this, you'd probably either have to be halfway drunk or stoned when you did this because they probably were at the factory. How else are you gonna get through a drudgery job day after day after day getting doing the same things? But anyway, I'm gonna take rest of the evening off because it's about past six o'clock now and I'm hungry. I think I'm going to have a pizza. And then tomorrow morning, the stuff, this stuff skins over pretty fast, but it needs to cure before we put any kind of paint on it. I think about overnight should be sufficient. And then I'm going to lay on the old rest of them and finish this up. And we're going to call the four pan job done. Now I still have to do some more welding on this. Got it. There, you see right there about mid-screen on that roof above the door, there's a 
square with a hole in it. Probably one up here too, as a matter of fact. But anyway, that's where the hole in it. That's where the seat belt anchor goes, and there's nothing in that except a hole. So I've got to weld some a nut in each of those for the seat belt, the shoulder belts, and then later on, not right now. Well, yeah, I guess I will have to do it right now. I was going to say I got to later on. I got to patch this trunk up some, but that's going to have to be done now because the, the gas tank has to come out to put that seal in it that's leaking. And so while the gas tank's out, it makes sense just to go ahead and patch the metal up, doesn't it? Sure does to me. So I guess that's what I'll do too. <laughs> Dang it. I wanted to be done with the welding for a while. I guess no such luck. All right, guys, I'm getting kind of woozy. So I'm gonna go in for a while and get some fresh air. So uh, I'll uh, shoot one last little clip on this in the morning when I get the paint on this. I'm gonna try to get up nice and early get that done and then it can just sit here and cure later on so i'll see you then in just a second well that should give you an idea of the weather outside see all this moisture on the floor that just leaches up through the concrete pad it's been so wet outside so okay i am home again from another five day trip i was out of town for well actually six days sunday through friday trying to wrap up the last little bit of this thing i've been doing up in upstate up here with the person that's been out with an injury and it's one of those things where this person kind of was doing the amount of work that they wanted to do, but as it turned out, there was a lot more work that could be done as far as like sales and things like that. So we've been, me and my assistant up there, been just uh, going at it. So we're getting these things done for our customers. So it's been real busy and real hectic, but I'm back on this. And so I wanted to show you, I thought I had made a video with this floor stuff before I left, but evidently I didn't. So I'm going to do it now. So I have these floors all done the best an amateur can do them. So are they pretty? Nope. But will they work? Yes. These are the ones back here that I'm just not fond of. They're real thin metal and all that. I pretty much despise them, but I used them. So, anyway, everything is in, welded, seam sealed, all that stuff. So, essentially, what I did with this is see more of it right here. But as I showed you before, I plug welded them and then tacked them around the perimeter because, like I said, I'm just afraid I was going to burn through too much stuff trying to do it in a different way. So did that, and then I took my strip caulk and caulked all around the perimeter, and then I used my, I showed you that seam sealer stuff I brushed on real thoroughly, except for right here. You may wonder why is there nothing right here. Well, the reason it's being is because it's kind of hard to see, but if you look over there, you see that metal channel that's a strip that's hack welded to the floor in several places. And there's one that goes here, but the thing was rusted out over here. The whole, like, two or three inches of it rusted out. And so it just it couldn't use it. It wasn't usable. So it's usable. I have to repair it. As a matter of fact, there it is right there. You see what's happened there? So the whole, whole end of it's gone. So that's got to be repaired. And that's going to be one of these things where I have to take another turn with the welder and try to do something that I've never really done before. And one thing is I've got some scrap metal from these patches, but this scrap metal is 18 gauge and that is not 18 gauge. That's probably 22 gauge metal. So it's a lot thinner and it's a lot easier to work with. And so that's something I had to learn that if you're making patches, try not to do it with 18 gauge metal because unless you have a foundry, <laughs> it's not easy to do. So that's one thing to remember. So. That's that. Floors are done, much as I'm going to do them. So I'm satisfied with that. And then coming back here, I started working on these channels where the 
seal goes around each of the windows, the rear window and the front window. And I knew I had some problems back here because I had a lot of water leakage into the trunk. And this is something, if you have one of these cars, a duster or a dart or a demon or a swinger or any value, anything like that, you can, especially if it's got a vinyl top, which luckily this one doesn't, but you can pretty much count on that you're going to have problems here because this is a low spot in these. And this one had, turned out it had a hole in it back here and it has one on the other side which I'll take you over there and show real quick in a minute but uh, it was pouring a lot of water right down in there and it's, it's all kind of nasty and stuff like that so I had to fix this of course I don't know nothing about fixing body work very well but it had a little hole here I was able to put just put some weld in and got that filled but there's actually, believe it or not, I mean, the whole thing's ugly because it's so rusted, but there's a patch in here. I actually did a patch and put in it. It's probably about, came over the lip and just kind of see the outline of it right there and then in there. And that was a lot of work because, like I said, I used a too thick of a piece of metal for it. It's hard to bend, hard to shape, hard to do everything. There's nothing easy about it. So, <laughs> but anyway, it's in and had to, just really build up the metal. This metal back here is kind of weak. I can get my hand around it. It's just, it's got a surface rust, but it's, it's pretty sound on through here. But the one thing, let's walk over here. One thing that shocked me about this, or I, I, well, I say it shocked me, but really it didn't, is the build quality on this car is just terrible as far as the metal, metal work. Now here's what I'm telling you about earlier. I was talking about it's a little, that piece of a little hole in it right there so that is not that's a hole but that's for the trim piece the trim that holds the, the, the little clips that's what that's for and so i went around in here pretty carefully and tried to expose any other holes and i can't find one and that one i'm hoping that i can just fill with some weld i've got to get some copper or whatever brass or copper to go hold behind here so i can let's about the only way you can weld through stuff like that because Otherwise, it just tries to blow the metal out. So, but this thing has got—I mean, this has got some rough-looking joints in it. I mean, these things aren't even level. It's no—it's no wonder that the wind, the gaskets try to leak. I mean, let's look up here. It's got a little place right here, which I'm debating about this whether I'm going to actually try to fix this or not because it's actually just the, that, the edge of a slot that's already there. But the camera's not working too well, is it? But it's tried to rust right there, but it's, it's still pretty sound. It's not, you know, but I mean, look at this stuff. Look right here, look how bad that joint is right there. And it had a little bit of seam sealer in it, I guess, tried to smooth that, but there's no way, that's like the surface of the moon right there. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's, the gasket sits in this channel. It's held in place by this. It just sits here. But then here at some point, right about right here is where it starts going over the, what I say, going over the fence. But I mean, it's just, I mean, that's why you cannot just put one of these gaskets in and just put it in dry. There's no way. It never worked. That's why the factory didn't do it. You look up here, there's got, I mean, it's, I mean, I guess they did it the way they had to do it, but, uh, so anyway i'm pretty confident i can put the windshield in with a rope trick but the problem with the rope trick is is how you gonna do the rope trick if you gotta seal the windshield in so i'm gonna keep on looking into that and my headliner has has arrived that i had custom made for it so that's good that's that's waiting on me and i've got the two uh anchor nuts I was telling you about a little bit earlier got those ready to go in I'll probably do that in the morning but uh something else is gonna oh yeah this is what I'm gonna work I'm gonna go in and get something to drink but after I do that I'm gonna come out here and make these sail panels and these are the headliner glues to this and these things go right here Go like that, and I just 
you know, nice, provide a nice flat surface for the sail panel area. And it's got a little bit of a curve to it, right, right about right there. But there's a nail that goes through there. There's a not that big oval hole, but right there, right in the center screen, there's a hole right there in this thing. And there's a screw or some kind of thing right there. Right there. Where you at? Right there. Right there in the center. That's what holds this thing down. So I was asking somebody on the internet. I said, okay, what are these things made out of? And I said, oh, it's just one eighth hardboard like you can get it to, you know. There's a place, there's a restoration place that sells them, but they're about three times what you'd pay for something like this. So I went down to Lowe's or Home Depot, I think it's Home Depot, and got this is one eighth inch hardboard. And the sheet of it's about five bucks. I got two sheets because the same thing goes on the deck panel back there, but I don't think this is going to be long enough for that. Maybe. But. So, anyway, so I make these things out of it, but I was looking at this and looking at these compared to this stuff, and I thought, that ain't hardboard. That's like cardboard, is what that is. That's like a real heavy duty cardboard. So, this stuff here, I mean, it'll curve, but it ain't going to curve as well as that did. It's going to be a better piece, actually. It's more, a lot more heavy duty, and it'll work. So I'm going to try to make them, but this is some sort of cardboard, some sort of mystery cardboard that they used. That's why it looks like that. It's got all the water damage on it. So anyway, I've got them marked, and so it's just glued on the back. And i got a big thing of glue I think will work for that. Some of this stuff, it's the original permanent bond on contact. Got my assortment of things out there and some brushes and all that. So <laughs> anyway, I'm getting there. So it's uh, working right along. This is taking longer than I thought, of course, if I said many times, but it's been, it's fun. It's fun. I'm gonna get this wrapped up and I gotta get on this mower because it's gonna, it's already, it's already almost the middle of January and grass grow season gonna get here before you know it. So hopefully I will have this about two more weeks in this before I can start it up and drive it outside. So Howard's making me look bad. Man, Howard's just knocking it out. But anyway, we'll get there having fun with it. So just wanted to update you. I'm gonna cut this video off here and uh go ahead and get it together and upload it thanks guys for watching and hanging in there sorry it's been a while see ya hey guys well a few of you one or two might have been wondering where have i been what have i been doing well there's your answer back there most of it so let me flip you around and i'll tell you if i can flip you around uh -oh. how's it how you doing on that come on Hey guys, well a couple of you may wonder where in the world I've been. So your answer is back there, part of it. So let me flip you around and kind of show you what's going on. <laughs>